Hello, theme park enthusiasts, and welcome back to Planet Coaster and Appleford Amusement Park. In this episode, I'm going to go ahead and add a water ride into the park. I felt like every park really needs to have at least one water ride to give you the chance, especially on those hot days, of just getting soaked, being able to enjoy, and just drying off in the sun as you go on the other rides. So with this, I originally thought about doing a log ride, but I have plans for my next park that I've already got in mind, and one of the biggest rides that I'm ever going to attempt in Planet Coaster is going to be a log ride. So I didn't really want to use that for this park. Uh, I felt like I wanted to do something that would be a little bit unique for the park, so I went with the boat ride instead. I originally thought about making it almost sort of a traveling ride, but then I thought, you know, for Appleford Amusement Park, they would have actually spent the money and put in a good ride here. Now, it's not going to be themed or anything, because that's not the style of Appleford. They're going to go ahead and just have a solid ride with decent lighting to it. That's what this park is about overall. They really don't do themes overall, other than the newest area of the park where they had the sort of race-inspired theme. So with that, I also want to just give an update of the series and what I have planned. After this episode, there will be one more episode where I'm putting in new rides. That episode's going to basically cover the flat rides and the additional shop facilities that I want for the park. At that point, I sort of feel like the park is going to be done as far as new structures and such. And all that's going to remain is to do the decorating as far as plants and things of that nature. So with that in mind, I won't really make it an emphatic episode about the plants and such. I am going to make it into a video, but what I'll do is I'll post that the same week as I do another video for the park, and that way, you know, if you want to watch all the plants being put in and stuff, you have the ability to. You can see exactly how I decorated the park, but if you don't want to, you don't have to, and you aren't missing much. Then we're going to have a final two episodes. One is going to be where I let the people into the park. And basically, I'm just going to watch along with you and see how the people enjoy the park overall. And then the final episode is going to be one where I go ahead and take you on all of the different rides with guests in the park and such. And so that way you can enjoy the feel of the park as well. So that's going to sort of wrap up the series. Those last two episodes are going to come out after my honeymoon, so they'll be coming out in November, most likely. It really depends how long it takes to get all the planting and such done. Um, so that's going to be the goal, is to try to get it done in November, but there's no guarantee of that. I will say I'm not intending or planning at all to get it done before I go on my honeymoon though. So this episode and the next one that covers the flat rides will be the last two Appleford episodes for the time being until after I get back at the beginning of November. Now, we've missed a decent amount here as I've gone ahead and set up the whole ride. As I said, I wanted something that was unique to the park. I didn't want something just out of a box. So I went ahead and made this into a double drop boat ride. And with that, I also wanted to be a fairly impressive one. So the second drop is actually a hundred feet that it drops down. Now it is at the angle of a normal boat ride, so it is not like it is um, dangerous or anything of that nature, but it is going to be thrilling in the excessive nature of how big of a drop it really is. So I'm fairly pleased with the way it came out here. I think it's a nice little piece at the back of the park as well. Uh, I really did care also about having this exit line that comes over the ride itself there so that way i can go ahead and have it where people both the people who are on the ride as well as people who just want to get into the splash zone have the ability to do so now here what i'm doing is i wanted to go ahead and connect the water that would be the storage area for this ride up to the pond that's over here um, now there's rules probably in place nowadays that wouldn't allow this to occur but this is an older park after all in appleford so it's probably how they would have done things back in the day now, unfortunately in the game, I can't have water flowing between these two areas. So what I'm doing here is trying to find a water feature that will at least give the illusion of water flowing between the two locations. And so I'm playing with the different types of water, figuring out what I think will be the best. And I go with these sort of uh, fire hydrant type places or pieces here, I believe it is. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide them actually in this rock work here so that it looks like it's just water flowing aggressively in between the two ponds. Uh, and 
sort of just trying to trick the eye a bit that it is flowing downhill into this pump. As I said, it's unfortunate that I can't make it work uh, just as a little stream or a river, but that is the way it is in the game, and it's not the end of the world for the game, so I'm not too upset about that. I do have several times, as you can see there, where the water just disappears, and I do have to add it back in at points. Um, takes a little bit of effort, but I do get it done. So here we're just getting all the different rocks set up here as best I can in order to try and make this uh, sort of hidden the fact that these are two different uh, pieces of water. Then we'll go back to the ride. I'm going to go ahead and put in the uh, different lighting and such for it to make it fit into the park overall. Now this, as I said, is not as new for the park as the go-karts are. The go-kart area really, in my mind, is the newest portion of the park, but it would be newer than some of the areas. So it is something that would draw in guests as a new entertainment piece. I sort of see this park as the type that would probably, every couple of years, spend a decent quantity of money on putting in a new large ride to draw the guests into the park. And once again, because of the storyline that's going on with the park, draw those guests in so that they might be fed upon by the owner of the park. So I wanted this to be here, but I also didn't want it to take away from things like the haunted house and such, as that is important for me. Now here I went ahead and put it into nighttime, so that way, well, first of all, I wanted to make sure that the boats were flowing appropriately and such. And here was a big thing for me is I wanted to see where the splash zone was because I do want to make the splash actually hit the bridge. Unfortunately, in game, there's no real way to do that. I will say the water rides are probably the weakest element of the game overall as they just don't have the realistic splash and stuff that you actually have in the real world. But... We are able to somewhat fake it. So what I've gone ahead here and done is I've gone ahead and taken a water spray. Um, I tested several different ones here to see which one I liked best. I came up with this bar here that I felt actually gives a good water spray. It sort of looks like it's coming off of the ride when it hits the bottom of the trough. And then I just set it to a timer so that way the spray seems like it's realistic. So I do go through a couple of different boats here just to make sure that it times it properly. And I also wanted to go ahead and put one over here at this drop as well. This drop isn't as big so I went ahead and put the, the sprayer down a little bit lower because I don't want the spray to go as far with it. It is going to soak people along that path but that's not the end of the world either. I mean it's the kind of thing that would happen in a park and would sort of draw attention for people to go onto this ride. So I do like that idea overall. Um, I wanted to create this sort of bridge here with this, and I did play around with some different bridges from the workshop. Didn't find one that I really felt fit, and so decided to try to customize my own here. I really didn't have in mind exactly what I wanted. I wanted something that somewhat made this area feel a bit claustrophobic as you're going through, and also might funnel some of the water back onto the riders on the boat as they're going through the area. But at the same time, I didn't want it to feel in any way like it was a scary thing like you might hit the bridge as you were coming down off of this massive drop. And so while I played around with a bunch of different ones, I sort of like this one, but it doesn't have that centerpiece that would connect it over a distance. You have to use them pretty much together. I wish there was a piece that had that sort of interior arch to it where I could go ahead and put them on each side and that way have it work out. In the end though, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to go with some simple concrete uh, squared off pylons here that fit with the concrete style of the bridge itself. I think it'll work perfectly fine. The color is slightly different, but again with concrete, depending on the pour and depending on the fact that this particular concrete is going to be in the water, the consistency might have to be a bit different, and so therefore the color would be a bit different. So they're just making a couple of easy pylons just to go deep into the water to hide them. And then here again on this side, simply just a squared off pylon so that that bridge has support on that side. Did want to make sure that it was in this corner as best as possible and so did redo it a few times there. But with that in mind, I felt like we had a bridge that's now constructed. It does have the splash that comes up to it 
And with that, I wanted to put appropriate signing here so that people on the bridge would know that this is a splash zone. So I played around with the trick that is in game. If you haven't tried this before, I highly recommend it. You can take certain signs like this little red one and you can go ahead and write on it and then put it into whatever surface it is, be it a wall or the ground. And if you slide it in just slightly, you'll actually lose the sign, but the wording will still be there. However, in this particular case, upon looking at it a bit further, I realized, you know what? I actually like the signs sort of standing out there. So I went ahead and for this particular case, I left the signs so that they're above ground. So that way they're, the full white pieces are there because I would want it to sort of catch the attention of the guests so they know if you're going to stand in this area, you're going to get wet. Once that was done, now I was on to going ahead and constructing the station for this ride. Now this station building isn't going to be anything extraordinary. I already have plans for the area of having a little bit of food and such in the area. And that'll come in the next episode. So with that in mind, I really didn't feel like it was necessary to go ahead and make this building too extravagant. But I did want to continue playing around with the concrete. It's a material I haven't used a ton of in the game before. And so I felt like it was neat. I did want to go ahead and have pillars here uh, that supported a roof to it, and I felt like, you know, I could do this, have a sort of unique design to it, played around with the concrete for the roofing, and had to do it a couple different times because I struggled with getting it exactly how I wanted it. Decided I wanted to sort of put these concrete beams, which you're able to sort of double up the concrete in these areas, which I really like, because it makes it a bit thicker and it makes it look definitely structural in nature in that way. Uh, so that's why if you see me sort of being in the same area for a little bit of time there, the reason for it is because I'm actually doubling it up so it's two thicknesses instead of one. Then I just needed to find a roof that I felt was appropriate for it. I went ahead and went with the uh, corrugated roof because it, once again, being a water ride, I felt like the corrugated metal, it would rust a little bit, it would get a little bit of patina to it, which I felt like was gonna be a really neat thing. But at the same time, I felt like it was going to go ahead and uh, fit what I was looking for there. After a bit, though, I just realized, you know what? With the concrete, it just didn't look fancy enough. So I went ahead and changed it out for the crypt roof, which in this case, the moss on the crypt roof actually works quite well because it gives that sort of feel of being near the water, which is exactly what I was looking for. With all of that in mind, now all that was left was to go ahead and name the ride and go ahead and put in all the lighting. And that sort of, for me, goes hand in hand because of the fact that the lighting is also the, uh, the name. So wanted to go with something a little bit creative here, but at the same time still fitting with just being straightforward. So in this case, I could see the advertising already on the local television channels where they're telling people to take the plunge. And I just felt like it fit well for this ride. I think it works. And we get the nice look of this uh, lighted sign for it here. Now I have learned as I've gone on, there's actually a trick to doing the change in color to this sign. I didn't do it here. And unfortunately that meant I had to go letter by letter and change the color for each and every part of it. But one way you can actually get around that, and I will be showing that some in the next episode, is that when you are putting these type of signs there, change the coloring for the first letter, and then you do have to go ahead and copy the particular letter over. So let's say it was the P. You do have to put a second P, but it will be in the colors that you have assigned it. And then you can go ahead and put the next letter and change it to be that next letter and it will still keep the color scheme that you want going on. So you don't have to go through and change each individual letter. All you'd have to do then is just go back through and delete the, uh, the added P or whatever it is that you had. So put a little bit of skeletal framework in it there just to make so the sign is actually structural and it's not just hanging um, in a non-believing fashion there. And here, I wanted to go ahead and continue with the yellow and purple lights that we have throughout the park. I love the way it looks at night, especially at a distance throughout the park, and so I wanted to continue that here. So I sort of just put them at areas like the lift hill, the drops, everything of that nature, the turnarounds, 
just so that we have some variation and we just have that visual interest to the ride overall. Additionally, I found that I really like the purple color around the signs because I feel like that doesn't take away from the old fashioned lighted sign, but at the same time, it does add a little bit of ambiance to it. The yellow, I feel like sort of almost overpowers the sign and takes away from the lights in the sign itself. So did go ahead and make those, cha those choices as far as which lights to use where as I was going along here. Did change the land up some just to make the actual positioning of the lights a little bit more believable so that they're actually sitting on something. And then the final thing I go ahead and do here is I go ahead and put in a fountain that's at the end of the ride here, as well as a fountain in the actual uh, entrance path to the ride itself. But with that, I'm gonna go ahead and let you just enjoy the last few minutes of the ride here and the ride construction. If you did enjoy it, we will be having a full on-ride POV of it when we get that last episode, either in November or a little bit later. And so I do hope you enjoy. If you did, please go ahead and click that like button. And if you've not already, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon, so they are aware when I produce new videos in the future. Thank you, and I hope to see you all again for more Planet Coaster and for more Apple Fruit Amusement Park.